G'day, my name is Bruce Robertson and this is Pirate Philosophy, the channel in which I describe the pattern paradigm, an original philosophy that is rigorous, logical and accurate, and one that I claim makes better sense of the world than any other philosophy. Welcome. Today I want to discuss imagination. What is it? What is its logic? And why is it so important? Imagination is important as it lies at the roots of perception. The process, the logical process of converting sense data into concepts of the mind. I discussed this in an earlier video, PP9, Patterns, Time and Space. And in that video, I introduced an algorithm and looked at this process of converting sense data into concepts. The algorithm is one of pattern identification. It looks for patterns within the data. And I described in that video an algorithm that describes that logical process for finding patterns. And intrinsic to that algorithm is a process of imagination. I won't go over the algorithm in detail here, but I will put a link to the video below and also add a copy of the algorithm uh, to the description below. And I just want to draw your attention to line two of the algorithm, which says input a template. And a template in this instance is a test pattern. It's a trial pattern, one that is subsequently tested according to whether it fits the data or not. And and this pattern identification process is the only possible way of converting sense data into concepts. And there necessarily has to be a process of imagination or trial or error in this algorithm because there is no deductive way of extracting a pattern from sense data without using trial and error, or at least in this instance, perhaps better stated as imagination and testing. And it is in the acquisition of these trial templates that imagination is necessary. But what is the logic of this imagination? How can a template be created, perhaps right at the start, from nothing at all? So when beginning at the very basis of perception, there are only two possibilities for creating a possible template. And the first one is just a purely random one, purely random template. Or you could use a sample of the data, which could perhaps be repeated in some way to recreate all of the data. But when a number of patterns have been identified, a third possibility arises. And that is one one could take a template or a pattern from an entirely different pattern identification process, one that fits an entirely different set of data, for example, one that fits one of the other senses, and then use that as a template for the particular pattern identification that one wants to achieve from other data. And it is important to note that there is no limit to what can be used as a template for the pattern identification process. So later on, for example, you could use something akin to a duck, everything is made of water, the moon is made of cheese, or time slows down the faster you travel through space. There is no limit to it. And the reason there is no limit to the range of te possible templates is that if the template is no good, it will not fit the data and can be subsequently discarded. 
For inherent in this pattern identification process is the inputting of a possible template and then testing it against the data and then finding out which one fits the data best. And the best patterns are ones that not only fit the data, but can also recreate the data. And there is only a pragmatic limitation to considering various templates. And that is in the amount of processing time required for to assemble all the various possible possibilities, possible templates, and then testing them against the data can be a very time consuming process. And not everybody, or not all the time, does one have sufficient time to be able to do this. Testing a template against the data is a bit like a filter system, whereby only the templates which have a reasonable fit to the data will get through and the rest are discarded. And then one only chooses the best template, the best pattern that fits the data. Without this imaginative source of templates and the filter system for testing templates, there can be no pattern identification. And if there's no pattern identification, then there's no concepts, and then there is no model of the world that can be created. This process of imagination and filtering is not too dissimilar from the trial and error process of genetic evolution. In genetic evolution, there is random variation of the genetic code, perhaps within a particular genome, which is then subsequently tested in the associated phenotype as to whether it provides an advantage or a disadvantage to the particular organism with regards to its survivability, i.e. its ability to survive, thrive and procreate. If it is a disadvantageous random variation, the organism will not survive, thrive and procreate, and the genetic variation will disappear from the gene pool. Whereas if it is advantageous, then the genetic variation will remain within the gene pool. And another place where imagination is important is in the logic of decision making. An algorithm describing the logical process of decision making was described in the video PP13, The Logic of Decision Making. I won't go over it here, but we'll put a copy in the description below and also put a link to that video. The imaginative part of the algorithm resides in the first instruction, which requires the collation of possible decisions together with their associated actions. So when reaching a place where a decision has to be made, the first thing to do is to collate or imagine all the possible decisions and their associated actions that one could take and make. And again, there is no limit to the range of possible decisions that can be considered. For again, there is a filtering system and those possible actions whose likely outcome does not benefit the decision maker will be discarded. And only those likely to bring benefit need to be considered in depth before the one that is most likely to bring happiness in both the short term and long term will be finally selected. And having collated all those possible decisions, one then has to imagine or visualize the possible consequences of those actions. And that requires another form of imagination, one that is perhaps more of an abstract visualization. And this abstract visualization also requires a good model of the world in order to make accurate predictions of the potential consequences. And having chosen a particular decision and put it into action, it is also quite important to evaluate the actual consequences to see if they align with the predicted consequences and then to learn from that for making subsequent decisions. 
Though that said, caution must be exercised as we live in a complex world that is full of change and quasi-random variations. So that one decision made one time with a particular consequence may not have the same consequence another time. So, for example, a child can run across a busy road without being hit by a car, but this is little indication that at another time they will achieve the same outcome. There is also another aspect of imagination that I would like to mention, and that is one where there is the creation of possibilities, as before, but this time without the filtering system of fitting the possibilities to the facts of the real world. These imaginations remain only as possibilities and reside in a sort of fantasy world that has no direct correlation to the world of reality. And these are often manifest in what are termed the arts, i.e. music, abstract paintings, abstract sculptures, novels, poetry, and so on. And these can act as a communication from the artist to the viewer as a sort of stimulus to the imagination to open the viewer up to the, the realm of possibilities. For imagination is an intrinsic part of the human mind. From the roots of perception, when infants seek to make sense of the mass of confusing sense data that they are confronted with, to the important decisions that people make in their lives, to the trivial game of looking at clouds and suggesting animals or other shapes that they may bring to mind. The logic of imagination is both intuitive and paramount. And imagination is so important to the development of the human race, as it is inherent in the fundamental and underlying process that has brought about the huge technological advances that differentiate the modern world from that of the hunter-gatherer lifestyle of our ancient ancestors. Without our powers of exploiting the logic of imagination, we would still be swinging through the trees. And without imagination, one can do no more than follow the paths created by others. And while there is nothing wrong with that, some people perhaps want something more. And perhaps it is also important that people use their powers of imagination in order to fulfill their potential as human beings. And finally, it may be of interest to note that other modern philosophies, i.e. philosophies other than the pattern paradigm that I'm describing in these videos, they typically ignore imagination or even try to suppress it. They do not encourage imaginative ideas or innovation. But so long as there are people who use their powers of imagination and promote new ideas and innovation, imagination can never be suppressed. Well, that is all I have for you today. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you have any comments, please leave them in the section below. And if you'd like to continue this journey with me, please subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. You can also visit my website, thepatternparadigm.com, for transcripts of these videos. I will put a link in the description below. Thank you.